Hey guys, what's up? This is Teddy Macedo, aka Bear Rimshot, speaking. Sorry I am late with this one. Now, the reason why I've been taking too long with this one is because, as you guys can see, yeah, there have been personal. There, there were some personal things I had to take care of first. And also, um. I, and also, um, and yes, people, at the same time, I was also busy. Now, now, as you guys can see, the reason why I've been taking too long with this video is because, well, there are some other things in my personal life I have to take care of first, including having to edit, finishing up making casual reviews of Bear Shot Wood as a public apology. Since I know a lot of you people have been demanding for the next casual reviews of Bear Room Shot to be made. Now, look people, I promise you for a fact that casual reviews of Bear Room Shot with a public apology will still be made. That means you, Azuchi Guardian. Yeah. And in case if you're all wondering when it will come out, well, expected to be released on March 6th, or if not, or if I don't release it, maybe for Autism Awareness Month, but yeah. The earliest one I will I will ever release it will be on March 6th. So yeah, so please don't come claiming that I made false promises. Then you're showing me that, then you're obviously rushing me. You ever get the to Toy Story 2 saying you can't do a short? That's the thing, you can't do a short. Anyways, um, you know if update talk, time for me to explain what are my thoughts on MAGFest 2018. Okay then, now, so, um, when it comes to going to MAGFest this year, I was supposed to to leave New York to go down to Maryland for that. However, due to this fear that my mom did personally have in regards to all the snow coming here in New York, this is the moment where mom decided to have me and her leave New York to go to Maryland, and luckily we were able to um, go to sleep at the Gaylord for one night, and thus I was able to find some time to be able to go swimming if I wanted to. Anyways, um, when Thursday morning came along, I did a lot of things independently. I got myself some breakfast independently, and then I would then go to, um, but then I would be going to, um, uh, but then I'd be going to go to, the, I, then I would do some swimming, and then I went to the fitness center, and then this is the moment where I got myself ready. For me to be able to go to MAGFest. I was able to get my badge independently, right? Anyways, um, and then this is a moment where the fun began. Now, you guys may be wondering what games did I play? Since this is a video game convention we're talking about. Okay, then, to be very honest. I've played Mario Kart Double Dash with the GameCube, played some Sly Cooper, played Star Wars Battlefront 2, um, played Star Wars Battle Pod. You know, you know, it's a funny, a funny thing, a crazy thing that happened when I wanted to play all the levels for Star Wars Battle Pod is one guy got really upset at me for wanting to play every level. 
So yeah, they did want to make up to him. This is a moment where he got angry at me at one point, but then this is a moment where things got peaceful between me and him. Now I can understand you have a lot of people who love Star Wars, which probably explains why Dante and I would both incorporate a lot of Star Wars for epic battles. And plus, the first few game, the first few Lego games that did get to be made based off of licensed properties would be Star Wars. And plus, we also did get a Disney Infinity game of Star Wars as well. So it shouldn't be a surprise to see how popular it would be. And plus, as you can see right here on my shirt, this is the only license this is the only movie in which M&M's would ever promote, a.k.a. my favorite candy. Speaking of Star Wars, I also played Star Wars Battlefront 2. Must say that I really, really enjoyed it as it is. Though, it, though not, not only did I play the one from 2005, but also, yes, people, I've played the one from 2017 as well. And yes, people, I am totally aware of all those microtransactions controversy I keep hearing about. Now, funny enough, when I got my, when I finally got myself my own copy of Star Wars Battlefront 2 for PlayStation 4, I thankfully didn't have to go through microtransactions at all. Though it's just a shame to see that when I bought myself a copy of Star Wars Battlefront 2, I've had to pay over a hundred dollars. Over one hundred and seven dollars. Damn. So anyways, um, yeah. And also, another game I also played, um, I also played Math Munchers. Really good math, really good math game to play. I will say, if you if you're good at math, of course. I bet Azuchi Garni ain't gonna like that, considering how horrible his math skills are. Hell, even the Timonier would tell you that. Anyways, um, yeah, another thing that also happened at Magfest. Guess who I finally bumped by? Guess who I finally? Guess who I finally got? bumped into when I went to MAGFest. You, you people would not believe me when I say this, but I bumped into a reviewer. Who exactly? Let's just say, well, it's someone by the name of Charles Thomas. If you guys don't know who that is, you guys may know him more as Duquette. Anyways, when I ran by Duquette, he and I were both so happy to see each other, I will say. Yeah. I am not gonna lie with you guys when I say this. I really, really, really did bump into Duquette. Though, of course, it wouldn't be the first time at MAGFest where I would meet up with a reviewer. Two years ago, when I when I went to MAGFest for the first time ever in my entire life, um, I I did get to personally meet James, the angry video game nerd himself, James Rolfe. Whom I will say, he's a very nice guy, I will say. I'm not going to lie to you people when I say that. Yeah, and, and the great thing about James Rolf, about the great thing about when I met James Rolf for myself, is he knows and does, he is thankfully aware about the fact of what a great influence he's been to many reviewers that exist. And I mean many reviewers do exist. Whether it be Animat, That Fell the Coat, The Nostalgia Critic, Hugh Tumor, VG Retro, Sonic Guru, the Happy Video Game Nerd, Morgan Ledger, Some Jerk with a Camera, Joey Tedesco, Jaime Tude, South Jersey Sam, 
even myself, even myself, as well as Banana Gamer 105, and even Azuchi Guardian, who's one of those people. Well, it's what happens when you have James Wolf, aka the Angry Video Game Nerd, as the as the man who helps pioneer internet review shows. If you ever want to get into internet review shows, then chances are you wouldn't become a reviewer without gaining at least some form of influence coming from both Doug Walker and James Wolfe. Now, Doug Walker, I will say, haven't gotten to meet him personally, but if I do, I will let you guys know. Luckily, I did get to meet James Rolfe a while back, two years ago, during my first MAGFest. Anyways, back on to MAGFest 2018. Um, another thing that also happened when I went to MAGFest this year include, um, um, now, um, any other games I've played? Now, I bet you're all wondering whether or not I've played any Smash Bros. Since Super S Smash Bros., I will say, is one of my favorite games. If I to be completely honest with you, sadly, no, I did not. But I wish I did. And another thing I also did at MAGFest, um... What you call it? Um... Hmm... Ah, uh, yes, um... Another thing that also happened at MAGFest would be B. I did meet I did meet up with the peep with the folks at Nintendo. And no people I don't mean people like Shigeru Miyamoto nor Masahiro Sakurai. Oh no 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 no. We're talking a local we're talking people who really do work we're talking like a local Nintendo store. Anyways Anyways, the people at Nintendo I noticed, I noticed they brought in a Nintendo Switch, right? Anyways, I did get to chat with the folks at Nintendo in general about in regards to Amiibo. Because as you people all can see, I've not only been very appreciative, but also, let alone, obsess, obsessive with the entire Toys to Life genre in general. Which includes Disney Infinity... Skylanders, Lego Dimensions, and of course, Amiibo. Yeah. When it comes to Toys to Life, I've been obsessing with this video game genre more than anything else ever since when I first moved into my group home back in December 2016. Yeah. And you know, when it comes to Amiibo, um... I've been talking to the folks at Nintendo about that. I've especially been telling them about of how that I would love to see more third-party Amiibo figures be made, even more than just Super Smash Brothers and Shovel Knight. However, the, the guys at Nintendo did tell me this, not the first time I've been told about this. However, I've been told to... Anyways, I've been told about of, by Nintendo about of how if I want any more third-party Amiibo figures to be made, if I want Amiibo support for any of my favorite third-party games to be made, it would be up to the actual makers of the games themselves. Like, for example, if I want Ami if I want Amiibo figures based on... If I want more Sonic Amiibo figures to be made, this is the moment where I would have no choice but to go all the way to Sega for that. Whereas for games like Street Fighter, I would have to go all the way for Capcom for that as well. Whereas, um... 
Whereas for all of the LEGO games coming to the Switch, including LEGO Marvel 2, I would have to go all the way to Warner Brothers Interactive for that. Whereas for both Batman the Telltale series and Guardians of the Galaxy the Telltale series, I would have to go all the way to Telltale Games for that. For all that. Whereas games such as the new Dragon Ball game coming to the Switch, I would have to go all the way to Namco for that. Namco Bandai. And... yeah. So, so after, after coming to the, realization, to the sad realization about of how that if I want more third-party Amiibo to be made than just Shovel Knight and... Um, more than just Shovel Knight and Super Smash Brothers. This is the moment where I would personally have to go all the way to... This is where I have to go all the way to the actual game... To the actual makers of the games themselves. This is the moment where I personally had no choice but to create a petition... For you, Switch owners slash Amiibo collectors to sign to the various different video companies that are making that are making at least one game coming to the Switch, past, present, present, and future, to add Amiibo support. As in, do like what happened to the Shovel Knight, similar to what happened with Shovel Knight, where they would create an all new Amiibo figures that I can use for those particular games. Because, um... Because I'm... I think it'll be a great idea if Sega can actually allow... can add Amiibo support for the Switch versions for games such as Sonic Forces and Sonic Mania. At least with Sonic Mania, if you add Amiibo support in the Switch version of Sonic Mania, it's where things can get a whole lot better in the eyes of the Sonic universe. Even if we might not get Amy Rose nor Dr. Egg, even if we might not get, even if in Sonic Mania you can't play as, well, when it comes to Sonic Mania, yes, both in, true, in both that game as well in Sonic Forces, you can't play as neither Amy Rose nor Dr. Eggman, but at least, but at least, um, for Sonic Mania, you, you still get to play as Tails and Knuckles, and in Sonic Forces, you still get to play as Shadow. So the only other Sonic characters whom you can expect to get amiibo figures if Sega wants to add amiibo support for the Sonic games coming to the Switch will be Tails, Knuckles, and Shadow. Well, at least for until further notice, on whether or not we would ever be getting a Mario and Sonic game, as well as whether or not we'd be getting a Super Smash Bros. 5, if yes, will any other Sonic characters make it in Super Smash Bros. 5, 5 besides Sonic. It's a shame we didn't get a LEGO Dimensions figure of neither Amy Rose nor Dr. Eggman, considering what Consider how, like, consider how that if you have Amy, if you make, if you include Amy Rose and Dr. Eggman while also including Sonic, you'd be talking up audiences. Seriously. Whereas, anyways, not only do I want some Sonic, some more Sonic Amiibo to be made, but also I'd love to see more Street Fighter Amiibo to be made. As well as Lego Marvel Amiibo and Batman Amiibo. So if you're somebody who either owns a Nintendo Switch and slash or loves collecting Amiibo in general, I highly recommend you all to check out my petition for that. The link to it can be found in the description below. So anyways, um, yeah. Sorry I got carried away with talking about 
Amiibo is just done well. I just can't help it but show my love, share my love for Toys to Life in general. Yeah, I'm not... And see people especially... This especially means you, Chrissy Trot, in case if you're watching this. Told you people I'm, I've been very obsessive over Toys to Life more than anything else. And yes, people, and I do mean even more than Morgan Ledger, even more than Mike Mixie, and yes, people, even more than Animat as well. I'm not going to lie to you guys when I say that. So anyways, another thing that also happened when I went to MAGFest this year, um, I met a band who, who mostly plays Legend of Zelda music. They were very nice and friendly, and I will say this, that, um, that, um, that I've listened to their music for, for myself, and I will say this, that it's pretty good from what I'm hearing. And another thing that also happened while that MAGFest would be, um, speaking of Toys to Life, I met a guy, um, who loves Sonic, I will say. I especially did talk to him about of how that I would love to see more third-party Amiibo to be made, including more Sonic Amiibo. And thankfully, he understood me completely. And another thing that also happened while at MAGFest would be, um, I also did get to meet this one convention, simply known as BronyCon. Now, when it comes to BronyCon, um, yeah, I will say this, that the people at BronyCon were very nice to me, I will say. And, uh, when I did talk to the people at BronyCon, I did personally share my own personal experience, experiences in regards to My Little Pony. I even told them on how I became a brony. Which it's... Which is really because I admittingly did something with the show creatively. Though it was rather unintentional on my part. <sighs> yeah. And you know, when it comes to My Little Pony, I'm really not gonna lie when I say this. But apparently, I've been becoming even more appreciative of the of My Little Pony. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. You see, for every character that does get to be in epic battles, no matter how bizarre they may seem, I unfortunately have to show my appreciation for those characters. In which explain, which clearly does explain why, when um, when demanding more third-party characters to get amiibo figures and just those appearing in Super Smash Brothers for them and Shovel Knight, I would be demanding to see more Sonic amiibo, more Street Fighter amiibo, a Batman amiibo and some Lego Marvel Amiibo. And if I ever want to buy myself any Amiibo figures in the future, expect me to mostly buy all... expect me to be able to buy all the Mario Amiibos, Super Mario Amiibo figures, not counting the cereal, and some Super Smash Brothers Amiibo, which would consist of all the Mario characters, all the Legend of Zelda characters, Kirby, King DDD, all the Pokemon characters, and some of the third-party characters as well. There are three I know that I know I can buy, consisting of Cloud, Sonic, and Ryu. Not sure about whether or not I'm, I'm going to buy the others, but yeah. And, yeah... And, um, yeah, when it comes to My Little Pony, um, 
when it comes to BrainCon, I did tell them my experiences with the entire My Little Pony series. And I told them that the reason... I told them that the reason why I became a brony is because I admittingly did something with the show creatively. Now, when we speak about the moment where I did include My Little Pony characters in Epic Battles, now, if you ever see any My Little Pony any characters from, from any preschool engine shows like My Little Pony, Thomas the Tank Engine, or Blue's Clues, please don't blame it on me. Blame it on Dante for that. And I will, and also, speaking of which, before I can continue, I have something I need to address with you all. And yes, this especially means you, Azuchi Guardian, and the same should also go to you, Mr. Ben, in case if you, in case if you're watching this, as well as the entire Westbrook community, both past and present, as well as all of SEO, both past and present. Now, I completely understand everybody is now. I completely understand everybody is always going to have their likes and dislikes here and there. And I can completely understand that everybody likes to be protective over their likenesses or as well as the things they've created or own. How Ever, one thing to be very mindful about when it comes to all this, that especially means you, Azuchi Guardian, and the same should also go to you, Mr. Ben, as well as the entire Westbrook community, both past and present, as well as all of Westbrook, both past and present, as well as all of SEO, past and present. Don't worry, Nico. <clears throat> Don't worry, Nick. Well, Center, in case if you're watching this, I know you know. I know you know what I'm gonna say. I know you're gonna listen, Nick. I know for you, Nicholas Centra, you're gonna listen. You're gonna be mindful about this. But still, as for the rest, well, I'm afraid I'm gonna ask you all nicely to please hear me out when I say this. That. Dante, who was one of my best friends who helped co-created Epic Battles with me, um, apparently doesn't like it whenever anyone dare come asking me or him to cut out any characters out of, out of Epic Battles. And I will ask you all nicely again, that means you, Azuchi Guardian, that means you, Mr. Ben, that means you all of Westbrook, both past and present, and all of you, SEO, to please don't even think about coming and coming to bug me or Dante to cut out of cut any characters out of epic battles in general whether you do it because of legal disputes whether it's because of legal issues or just because you don't like don't like a, a specific character that's in it for whatever reason please don't think about coming asking me or Dante to cut out any particular character out of Epic Battles. Why, you all may ask? Well, let's just say, well, if a character inclusion means a lot to him, it means a lot to him. So you people can all just leave me and Dante alone! That means you, Azuchi Guardian! That also means you, Miss. <coughs> 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 Went down the wrong pipe. Anyways, this also means you, Mr. Ben. This also means you. Oh, this also means the entire Westbrook community, both past and present, even all of SEO. Please don't come bugging me nor Dante to cut out any characters out of Epic Battles, because if a character inclusion means a lot to him, it means a lot to him. That's that. And do keep in mind that I do have a spin-off of Epic Battles in the works called Battle of the Groups. So if you ever see a character that you may dislike appearing in Battle of the Groups, please don't... I don't want to hear anybody complain if you see a character include, be included. 
and, and when Battle of the Groups does first does come out, uh, does come out in general, especially when it does first come out as a tabletop game, I want to see everybody, especially you people out there, to all think more about what you actually like, instead of just heavily nitpicking based on what you actually. I want you. I want you people. I want everybody out there, especially you people. I want all of you people out there to think more about what you actually like instead of just heavily nitpicking based on what you actually just like. In other words, think more about what your taste in pop culture may suit you or society. So if you see a character that you may dislike, you'll have to live with it as it is. Or if you see a character whom you know you may honestly like, then you should feel happy about the fact that you can actually play as that particular character. And if you see yourself appear in Battle of the Groups, can, you should feel happy that you can play as yourself. Or if you see somebody whom you know and you get along with in Battle of the Groups, you should, feel, you should also feel happy for them to be able to play as them as well. So please, I, please, I don't want to hear any complaints if about of how if Dante and I were both ever including any particular character for epic battles, both past and present. If a character inclusion means a lot to Dante, it means a lot to Dante, and it means a lot to me as well. I know it may sound harsh when I say that, but it's true. So like I said before. When Battle of the Groups does first come out, Battle of the Groups does come out, think more about what you actually like instead of thinking, instead of heavily nitpicking <coughs> based on what you actually dislike. In other words, think more about what your taste in pop culture may suit you. Anyways, I also did talk to BronyCon about the controversies I've personally gone through from when I became a brony. And and I did ask them to see whether or not it's true that all bronies are gay. And I just knew in the bottom of my heart that uh, not all bronies are gay. And technically I mean I mean yeah. Technically not all bronies are gay. You've got bronies that can be straight like myself. And you know, be, be, being that I am a brony just because I did something with the show creatively, um, this means that I guess I'd be one of those people who, uh, now, now, every single time whenever I hear someone say that all bronies are gay, this is a moment where I'd be claiming someone to be a... Anyways, yeah. When it comes... Yeah. Yeah, when I did meet up with the BronyCon people, I told them about my former editor, Zuchi Guardian, who claims all bronies to be gay. And I just knew in the bottom of my heart, that is false right here. I mean, seriously, think about it. I mean, in response to his latest Holy Updates video, how is somebody gay while somebody already has a girlfriend. That still doesn't make any sense. That's the, that's why I never want to be gay at all, because the thing that does bug me about being gay in general is the fact, well, the thing I never liked about being gay in general would all come down to the fact, now when you're, when you're being gay, this means that you'd be, you'd be having, when you're in a romantic mood, you'd be having sex with someone in the same gender. Meaning thus, if I were gay myself, then this means that I would have to deal with looking at guys' penises, in which grosses me out big time. Do I really have to look at guys' penises a lot? Because that grosses me out big time. Whereas when you're straight... This means you get to have a girlfriend. And that's why I feel more comfortable being straight than being gay. Because 
The beauty about me being straight would all come down to the fact that if I were straight, at least I'd get to have a girlfriend. Which explains why I do have a girlfriend myself. No wonder how Azuchi Guardian would be mean to me a lot, and yet at the same time would be nice to my girlfriend. Why? Just why? Yeah, that's the thing I hated about being gay in general, is the fact that, well, is, is if I were to look at things like porn, I would have to deal with looking at guys' penises. And that really does gross me out. I would rather look at... I'd, I'd rather look at naked women than naked men. At least with naked women, at least... At least with naked women, at least it, it fits to my appeal. Whereas naked men, on the other hand, ew, gross. Okay, then. Speaking about all that... Speaking of Battle of the Groups, well... I... When I went upstairs to the board games area, I did meet up the guy who once sent me a nice e who wrote me an email back about of how might talk to you via email about in regards to when I do get myself a play table. And, and I must say, he, he was very nice to listen to. And, and when it comes to battle the groups, um, when it comes to being able to bring in my play table, I definitely would be willing to do it when I'm ready. It's not now I'm doing this. It's in the future when I'm ready. And for anybody wondering when will Battle of the Groups first comes out, that may, like I said before, it may take a while. So please don't panic to me if you see that I've been taking too long with, with that, just like if How's Uchi Guardian was. With the next casual reviews of Bam Shot, as well as of how Mr. Ben was Epic Battles, to a crap like that. Yeah. And which reminds me that anybody who thinks all bronies are gay are pretty much nothing but major sex offenders. And yes, that means you as Uji Guardian. You're the evil Mickey Evilson who always likes to be a major sex offender about people liking things or crap like that, or stuff like that. You all want to know why Azuchi Guardian is a major sex offender? He not only thinks all bronies to be gay, but also he thinks, um, whatchamacallit, alright, he thinks, he nicknamed Kutz, Cunts. If you don't know what Kutz is, it's a Jewish sleepaway camp I used to go to a lot. Mostly during my residential days, but yeah. What makes him, and what does make Azuchi Guardian a major sex offender for those two things would be, now, if you're claiming all bronies to be gay, then you're clearly claiming an entire fandom to be one sexual orientation. And you know that is not true, that all bronies would be gay, because... You have bronies who can be straight as well. Like myself. And even Huey Tumor is one of them as well. And if you have a girlfriend, this means you're straight. 100%. You could be bisexual, but most likely you'd be straight. Hell, even... Yeah, and because that Huey Tumor does have a girlfriend, this clearly does make him straight 100%, whether you like him or hate him. So please don't come calling him gay for liking My Little Pony. So major no Johns for that. But yeah. 
Anyways, um... As for how Izuchi Guardian is indeed a sex offender for calling Kutz cunts, well, let's just say you're, call you're nicknaming an entire Jewish sleepaway camp to be a woman... To be a private part of a woman's body, of of woman of a female's private part. That is sexually offensive. You're doing seriously. When it comes to cuts, they're like family to me, and I know you don't want to be Jewish. Fine by me. In fact, I have friends who are not Jewish as well. Does that bother me? Hell no. But anyways, um, and then comes to the moment, I'm pretty sure a lot of you people who went to MacFest are probably going to be asking me whether or not did I buy any merch for myself. You know, merchandise in this case. If I had to be very honest, yes, I did. But unfortunately, I didn't get to buy much. I didn't get to buy much. Well, that's because I'd be in I'd be in financial. Well, that's because I've been ha I'd be having. That's because I'd be low on cash. I'd be low on. I'd be having financial issues in this case at that at, the, at that time. The only things I was able to buy myself are got to buy myself are a Nintendo sixty four shirt. And I did a commission of a drawing of Jane appearing to be naked in the, in the form of Ariel from when she first became a human from The Little Mermaid. Now, for anybody who would love to see that, I'm sorry, people. I'm afraid you can't. Why? Because I fear if I did, then I'd be violating YouTube's guidelines. And you know YouTube does not like it whenever anyone on YouTube dare upload any videos that may seem sexually offensive or stuff like that. So yeah, to keep it family friendly and to respect YouTube's copyright, YouTube's policies in general, not just copyright, but also in general, I can't show you my drawing, I'm sorry. I don't mean to disappoint you all, but it's true. Sometimes I have to follow the rules and it's life I have to accept. Anyways, um, another thing I also did when I went to MAGFest, um, now funny enough, I wanted, I would have also wanted to buy myself a PlayStation shirt, but that never happened. Due to the fact that, that that they didn't have the right size for me. And another thing I also would have loved to buy myself but sadly didn't would be this GameCube controller adapter I would love to be able to use for my Wii U to be able to do five player matches of Super Smash Bros. 4. As well as um to make matters even better, being able to play some Super Smash, being able to do four player matches, either one player, two player, four, three player, four player matches of any fan made Super Smash Brothers games I can find that can take GameCube controllers like Super Smash Brothers Crusade or Super Smash Flash 2. Unfortunately, didn't get that either, but at least I managed to get myself a fourth GameCube controller at Super Smash Con last year. So I'm all covered if I want to do four player matches of games like Super Smash Bros. Melee, Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Kart Wii, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and even the original Super Smash Bros. and Mario Kart 64 for me to play on my Wii. As well as, uh, yeah. And and when and we when we speak about the moments when I would be working out, whenever I do get to, to exercise myself, I would be watching videos for the sake 
of my fifth Mr. Coat Awards vlog, in which will be coming next. In which I'll be doing for February, just in preparation for, to get myself excited for the seventh annual Mr. Coat Contributor Awards. Well, that is if it is going to happen. Hopefully it will. But, yeah. And that is all I have in mind for today. When we speak about MAGFest this year. Again, sorry I'm late with this one. Except trolls, of course. And... And I will see you all for my fifth Mr. Code Awards vlog. Bye-bye!